What's your story? What's your sign? It's like we're twin flames in a different life Deep connection, lights a spark It's like you know me in the depths of my heart We're dreamers What's your type? Somehow I wanna know all about you Deep connection, lights a spark You already know me when we dance in the dark We're dreamers Good evening, not good evening, that's good afternoon from you. <laughs> good evening, it's good start, isn't it? Right, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, how the devil are you? I hope you're all well. Uh, thanks for coming over and joining us. As you saw, some nice loving cups. Thank you very much to everybody who took the time to create and make a loving cup and uh, done it and sent it over. Very much appreciated. Uh, we always enjoy the, the hashtag weeks and like we always say it's your interpretation so as you can see some many different style many different styles and looks and really good so as you all know nick's not here today no nope. um so we have the one the only mr brian here he is look it's me it's again, me again. <laughs> god help you it's me again so thank you brian for coming yeah, over and helping and you're welcome so like i said to you friday um we had a bit of response from dementia uk so i've got a letter here that i'm just going to quickly read out to you it says dear stephen and sk crafts thank you very much for you and all your amazing viewers for all your incredible credible support in 2022 and choosing the, to support dementia uk we have raised you have raised an astounding four thousand two hundred and ninety four pounds through your online auction and makers t-shirts which is an amazing achievement thank you as you know, dementia is a huge, huge and growing health crisis. By 2025, it's predicted that over 1 million people in the UK will be living with the condition. But while there is no current cure for dementia UK, there is care and care can change lives. That's why we are grateful for your support. Every penny you raise will go to help number of specialist admiral, admiral nurses so they can provide a lifeline for more families facing dementia. Once again, thank you for your donations uh, because you, because of you, our nurses can help more families face the future with confidence. Best wishes, Maya Senior. She is the lady who was in contact with me. So thank you very much for the letter, Maya. And also, they have sent me, or us, shall I say, oh. a certificate, which I will take a photograph of and I will stick it on the uh, uh, Maker's Auction Facebook page. So there you go. So that's a massive thank you to each and every one of you for your constant support through the auction. And uh, uh, it just shows that that they do appreciate what we've done for them. Um, Excellent. So, yes. Very well done, everybody. Yeah, well done. So with that, um, if you came over last week, you would have seen me start the hollow form stroke, two bowls glued together <laughs> um, piece I was doing. What I've done... The cheating holoform. Yeah, cheating holoform. So what I've done is I've actually 
glued on a neck on it now. I glued that yesterday. So we're going to get over and try and get that finished today. Uh, if we get a chance, we'll give it some texture and some color. But at the moment, we're just going to take our time and get it finished and see how it goes. So we will go over to the lathe and Brian will welcome you all in. Uh, I'll try my best. Man. You just remind us how thick you left the walls. Uh, the walls were left around about five mil thick. Right. So there's not much to take off on the outside if you want no, to no. Re redefine the shape a little bit. No, not a lot right, at all. Good. Right, excellent. So the first thing today was uh, Colin, Wood Wizardry. Uh, Chris followed by James, now Michelle, and then Doug from Woodspawn Right. Uh, John Mooney came in after that. And then uh, Terry from TJ Turning appeared. And I'm looking at the chat on my thing, and I don't think it jumped away sometime after that. Um, Colin Izzards and Alex of Wooden Things. And then a, a, a restart again, uh, James Dunn. So whoever was in before that, it may have disappeared. But let's keep going down here. Um, well, TJ Turning. They're all very sociable and say hello to each other a lot. Yeah, Barry's Wood Creations is in. Let me just keep scrolling. Oh, who's that? Dara Collins in. Hi, Dara. Uh, said Michelle. Michelle's in my sitting room. Not too far away. Chris Dodds is in. All the way from Australia as well. Uh, who else? We've got 66 people watching. I can't believe that. Susie Swiss Wood Turner's in. And she says, good afternoon, everyone, from sunny Switzerland. And Robert Brockwood is in. Graham Brown, good afternoon, Graham. I'm currently scrolling like a mad thing. Andy, the Valley Wood Turner, and so Lucy can't be too far behind, I wouldn't think. She'll be around somewhere. Uh, Paul Kaplan is in, good afternoon, Paul. Grandpa Jim, the Wood Turner, good morning from Florida, he says. Good morning. All the way from Florida. Wesley Hannah has joined us as well. William Kenny's in. Good afternoon, all. Hope everyone is well. I'm well enough. It's part of the sore food still. Ah, homebook. Um, Roger Kent. <laughs> Rex B's in. Uh oh. He says it's cloudy morning here in central Florida. Well, I feel really sorry for you because it's usually pretty nice in Florida. Shug is in, Yuri Lionheart. Good Hi. afternoon, ladies and gentlefolk, he says. Oh, who has the devil are you? Yeah, I haven't seen Yuri around for a while. He's been in hiding, obviously. Yes. I would think Kevin 9K Creations in. Dr. Bob, he says he's from Washington. It's two degrees Celsius there. <laughs> you can keep that, Dr. Bob. It's nice here, it's about 12 degrees here. Very nice. Pleasant. Uh, who else? Malcolm Douglas is in. Almost, almost always miss out, miss out Malcolm, but he's there today. Uh, Susie has a question for you. She says, will there be a, an Easter egg week? Hashtag Easter egg for Easter. Uh, you'll just have to wait and see, Susie. <laughs> no hints. You're getting no hints. We don't like uh, giving Dodd too many. We don't like giving too much away. No, Dodd from Glen Grove is in. Wavy Woodshed is in. That's Andrew. I said Chris Dodd. Uh, Brent Breecroft is in. Uh, Terry, the TJ Turning is in. Uh, uh, Terry's on tomorrow, guys. By the way, guys, and uh, don't be fooled because Terry will be a bit late tomorrow. He's not on till one thirty tomorrow. I'm just getting that in now. I'll remind you again later. Uh, Terry has got a, a, a link ready. You could probably put it in, but I don't think he has, because he's a lazy so-and-so. Uh, Rex B's in. He says, I have a question for the males. I've just found out I have a prostate... Oh, I just found out I have prostate cancer. Oh, man. With radiation treatment starting soon. Any advice, suggestions, please? Rex, I'll maybe email... I'll maybe... Um, wow. Well, sorry, hear that, Rex. I hope you can get that, that soon. We caught it early enough and you get that sorted out, buddy. Definitely. Um, a few... Um, I'll maybe message you because I do have some advice on that. Um, 
but it's not for sharing over a live uh, who else have we got <laughs> oh Terry has got a link he's not that lazy after all either that he's just done that now so there's uh, Terry's link for tomorrow anybody who wants it alright Gary Glass is in all right. And I think I'm at the end of the list. Uh, Wood turning by Barry is in now. Says Robert. Yep, that's about the end of the list. We've 64 people watching currently. Oh, uh, CNM's in. That's uh, Christine and Michael, I take it. I didn't see their names somewhere, though. Joe Senior's joined us. Oh, Stephen sure. Wood, who is. Is in as well. Oh, Lucy just appeared. Good afternoon, Lucy. Michelle just shouted something at me, and she thinks I can hear it. She thinks you can hear it. Yeah, she thinks I can hear what she said. But she said she's two rooms away, and the doors are closed. So I don't know why she thinks I could hear that. Joe, I think, I think, did she say Joe and Glenn's in? I said hello to Joe. Joe's in. I uh, didn't see Glenn's name, though, coming up. But if he's there, he's there. Welcome. Who else have we got? The chat's just kind of flying by here. There's loads of people talking to each other. Well, let's see, being sociable. Amy DeAngelis is in. Hi, Amy. Hi, Amy. All right, so I'm going to try and shape this neck a little oh. bit before I turn it. The Yorkshire Grit is in. Good afternoon, Glenn. Afternoon, Glenn. Nice to get out of your bed this morning then, okay? You started cooking in that nice new kitchen yet? <laughs> Michelle just said, listen harder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can be quiet, Michelle. Right, I think we're up to date in the chat. If I've missed anybody's name out, uh, just stick a name out in the bottom there and I'll try and give you a shout out. Didn't see any new names there today so far, but we'll, we'll hopefully find some more. Don't forget, if you've got a question for Steve, just prefix it with a couple of question marks so it stands out for me. <coughs> Michael McEwen's in. Hi, Michael. Hi, Michael. Ben Jammond's in, he says, can I just say that I have absolutely nailed these soft-boiled runny eggs. Abs well done, Ben, because that's the best way to eat an egg, I have to say. Uh, Glenn's cooking chicken today. And Glenn. Nice. Shane Hurst. Did I not mention Shane Hurst? Hi, Shane. Oh, Terry's asked a question. He says, Steve, briefs or boxers? That must be an in joke. That must be an in joke, is it? Who's that, Terry? That's Terry, yeah. Because I asked him that the other night, didn't I? Yeah, you did, yeah. On a Sunday, Terry, none, because then I'm a clean. <laughs> <laughs> Huey disagrees with you about the egg. He says the best way to eat an egg is in a cake. Well, fair enough, yeah. I suppose you could be right. But I don't much eat cake, so. I was listening to a thing on my road trip yesterday, and it was on Radio 2, and they were talking about Yorkshire puddings, and there was a huge debate about Yorkshire puddings. Uh, Lucy has just mentioned their uh, Yorkshire puddings. That's why I brought that up. Terry Bartlett's in. Hi, Terry. Hello, right, Terry. How the devil are you? Now, see, you've just put me in a notion for a Yorkshire pudding today, now. Lucy, oh. Monday, bro. 
Terrible. <laughs> William Kenny says you don't eat anything. I was, I was down at William Kenny's yesterday. I drove down to William's yesterday just for the for the fun of it. Um, and his good lady wife down is a she's just typical Irish mommy. She just wants to feed you all the time. It, it was wonderful. Hospitality was amazing. I don't eat very much. And I came home with a boot full of wood from Williams again. Mm -hmm. He keeps, he keeps, uh, he's a terrible man. Just, just take that bit there. Just, oh, here, have a look in this, have a look in here. There's a nice bit there. Put that in your boot too. <laughs> For goodness sake. It's wonderful. It's much appreciated. Thanks, William. Joe Senior says, question. Ah, what's it like to be back home, Steve? Lovely, Joe. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Yeah, going away is nice, but coming home is better. You don't realise your home comforts until you're not here. Okay, Ben Jamin says, let's have a vote. Little Yorkshire food that you can fill and eat in one mouthful, or the big ones that you can put your whole dinner in. Big fluff, not big fluffy ones, not huge ones, oh. but nice fluffy Yorkshire puddings. I don't like the wee tiny small ones that you could just, you know, just this. Cake tray size, I like. Yeah, that's the ones, yeah. Right, so I'm trying to get that to feather into that neck there. Mm -hmm. That's looking good, though. It's a nice cove shape you have in there. Uh, Robert Brockwood is asking, is that a homemade negative rake scraper, Steve? Yes, it was. It was just a normal scraper that I um, created into a negative. Right. You re reground the top bevel? Yep. So what, what angle did you put on the top bevel? 25 degrees on the top. Yep. No, was it 20? No, that's more than that. 25? 30, probably, isn't it? Mm, I don't know, maybe... As long as the included angles don't don't uh, add up to more than eight degrees, you should be all right. Yeah, I can't remember what it was. I think it might have been. I think it might be yeah, twenty five on. The, I think it might be twenty five on the bottom and sixty on the top. Yeah, other way around, Steve. I would think it probably came a sixty degree bevel on it. Well, whatever it is, it's a fine one on the top. Mine's just sixty thirty. That's what mine is. Yeah, that might actually. Six, might be. Yeah, you might bottom. be. I might be twenty five on the top and then sixty yep. on the bottom. Uh, Andrew from AJK has just joined us. Hi, Andrew. Hi, Andrew. Right, let's have a look at that. <laughs> William has just said, I get as much en uh, entertainment out of, out of it as you watching you turn it. Thanks, William. <laughs> Appreciate that. Bit. Is that because he's so bad at it, William? Or? <laughs> hey, oi, oi. <laughs> hey, we're friends like you who need enemies. That's <laughs> what I've got to say. <laughs> Now my next question is you've got a nice shape coming out of the top of the bowl or the top of the hollow form, that nice cove. Uh, but the joint between the two sections, the two bowl sections, this is bit. still pretty prominent. You gotta yeah. reduce that a little bit. I'm or? gonna try to, but I don't want to go too much because I think I've got a, a joint in there, haven't I? You have. So I don't want to get down to the joint with it. I don't want to I look a bit better, don't I? Mm -hmm. Does indeed. Man, you've got to texture that a wee bit or something to try and cover it up. Uh, not, not, not disguise it as such, but just to blend it in a bit more. Uh, ben Jalman says, I still not had an answer about the best angle. I know uh, there is the 90 degree included angle rule. Cindy's Rosa says, has, has a like to a 30 degree included. What? A 30 degree included angle? Yeah, fine. Uh, ben reckons there must be some science behind it. I, I have no idea about the science behind it, Ben, but uh, 60 degrees in the bottom and between 25 and 30 on the top seems to work really well. Yeah, it's got to be under 90 degrees.
by Kerry Yorkshire Pudding and uh, Lucy is saying that hot fat is the key to good Yorkies. Uh, you've got to put a, a little bit of fat in the bottom of the tray, haven't you? That's going to be scorching hot. Get, get, uh, almost smoking hot, if you like, and then pour in your mixture. Not that I've ever made uh, Yorkshire puddings um, from scratch. Never. I buy them. We keep, we use batter mix. We use uh, Tesco's batter mix. Well, All right. and just put an egg and some milk in it rather than water. Well, I'm even lazier than that. I just buy Aunt Bessie's. <laughs> oh, no. Aunt Bessie's. <laughs> <laughs> But then I'm not for Yorkshire. I have no idea what a good Yorkshire food tastes like. I think I think Aunt Bessie's are pretty good. But there you go. Yorkshire Gip says uh, thirty included will work, but go but go dull in about thirty seconds of use. There you go. So if it's too sharp and incline, it's a bit like uh, it's just kind of just your uh, bevel will disappear or not your be be bevel because it's not the bevel that's actually cutting that it's the uh, burr yep. is the word I'm looking for when you're raising the little burr when you sharpen it you only sharpen the underside you don't sharpen the top so sharpen the underside that raises the burr and it's the burr that does the cutting it is so if you've got 30 de theft, so if you've got 30 degrees included that's 15 15 um, so you've, you've only got a tiny little burr there It'll disappear in no time. Roy the boys uh, managed to make it home, Steve. Good man. He's in. Hope you got them covers up, Roy. <laughs> <laughs> and you're not just sitting here watching this. You should be working at the same time. And, uh, wood Tunning by Barry has just said... Lucy's a swear on the wee brain. <laughs> Sorry, Lucy. <laughs> Uh, Colin says oh, if I can get this thing to stop a bit of vinegar in the bar makes them even more fluffy and crispy oh there you go there's another interesting bit of information oh say so Ben says sorry it's not 30 but 50 no I suppose you've been the same issue if it's the the, the finer the angle the less of the, the, the bar that you're going to have Right, so I think I'm going to sound this up as it is here. No, actually, no, I'm going to turn it first. John Mooney thinks he's hungry now because it's pudding duck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a nice piece of roast chicken or something uh, with uh, Yorkshire pudding might be nice this evening. I don't know. Ah, Wood Wizardry by Collins asked me a question. What grit is the best for sharpening chisels and skews, etc.? 120. Well, if you go much above 120, um, um, what you again, you, what you tend to get is, is a, a, an edge that, that disappears too quick. So 120, 180, 200-ish is probably uh, good for wood turning because you don't really want it super sharp like a, like a bench chisel, like a flat work chisel. If it's super sharp like a flat work chisel, it'll just dull in no time at all. And you'll be forever sharpening. So it's a, it's a basically it's a compromise because because the wood is travelling at, at such a speed, your chisel is actually cutting miles and miles of wood if you like, because it's coming over that far. That's why you use a, a kind of a, um, a a grit of somewhere between one twenty and two hundred. That's why I use that, right? So the diamond belt on the uh, Pro Edge is 200 grit. And the... Um, most of the, uh, the other belts are, are 120 grit. I thought the diamond belt was 180. I didn't realise it was nope. It's 200. Initially, when they first brought out the diamond belts, they were 180. But then they had a bit of an issue... Uh, with um, some of the diamonds coming loose and uh, the belts degrading, uh, and I don't know if they got a new supplier or what, what, whatever they did with it, but they, they, it comes in a box now and it says two hundred grit on the box. Or mine did. 
I did a video on it, so on, on the care and maintenance of your Pro Edge, and I installed the new diamond belt at the time. So, yeah, Doug Miller says, can't see what Steve's doing. Uh, oh, your picture and pictures covering where you are, Steve. Oh, is it? Oh, sorry. Yep. Where, so where, I was where? busy reading the chat there. Wherever you put the camera, you ain't going to see what all you might do there. Just... Yeah, that's that's that'd be better there. I'm just trying to take out. Going to see it. Calm down, Steve. Just trying to take out some of this. Huh. Thanks for pointing that out, Doug. Just I'm trying to take some of this out here. Yeah, just trying to hollow it in a little bit. Oh, Todd at Glencove has just finished a big fat chocolate chip muffin for his breakfast. Todd? No. Pete from Twisted Trees is in. Hello, Pete. How the devil are you? <laughs> he says, uh oh, it's the Irish Nicky. They are Scottish. Scottish. Sco I'm Scottish, Pete. I just happened to live in Ireland or the north of Ireland. But I'm Scottish. I mean, thanks, Michelle. Michelle just pointed out you do. Got to move his tail stock out of the west in the way. Yeah, Pete just agreed with me that it's 200, 200 grit now. It was 180 about a year ago. Difference, difference is 20 grit. No, it makes no difference, really. Terry says, I use a diamond belt, 200 grit on the Ultimate Edge and 180 on the CBN wheel. Perfect. Susie, the Swiss wood turner, is asking me, Brian, why did you move from Scotland to Ireland? Well, Susie, that's a whole long, complicated story. Love. Basically, I was captured by a woman. Let's put it like that. <laughs> Stephen says, I'm just dragging my tools out of the car door to sharpen them. <laughs> <laughs> and Ben reckons that Terry needs to stop spending all his retirement money. <laughs> no, he doesn't. He might as well spend it. Sure, he could be dead tomorrow. Oh, he can't, oh. he can't take it with him. It's actually two. It's actually been two women, Terry. Ben Jamin, um, the food in Scotland is not awful. I have to tell you. Right, I mean, where, where else in the world you go? You, you can get a deep fried Mars bar. I mean, come on. That's just wrong, that is. <laughs> You're absolutely right. That is wrong. And Rex says, "I thought you moved uh, moved for your horses." No, I didn't have horses until I came here. And that was Michelle's sister's fault. Yeah, Robert says, yeah, women do that to you. They do, Robert. It's strange enough, they do. <laughs> uh, Chris said, I thought you moved for a change of the weather. I could, I could, if I was going to go for a change of the weather, and I went further south, Chris, but somewhere a bit warmer. Brian Breakwift says, ah, Michelle. Mm. So it was a, a warm Irish lass. Yeah, you're quite right. It was. Although she's not Irish, she's British. She's the same as everybody else. She just happens to live on the island of Ireland. So Todd Glen Cove says, the owner of Wood Turner's Wonders told me that a combination of 180 and 600 for CBN wheels was what I should get, assuming that it wasn't going to be rough shaping tools. Yeah, the 600 wheel, Todd, is for um, like planar blades and stuff like that. Uh, it's not really for 
good timing gauges, I would suggest. Kevin AK says, uh, question, question, would it not be easier to pre-draw that hole? It's only a shot. You've got to remember, it's the, the, the main body is already hollowed. Yeah, same so It's just that it's only a short piece that he's, he's hollowed into, so it's easily done with a, a bow gauge, or a, sorry, a spindle gauge. I thought I'd do something different. I normally drill it out, so I thought I'd do something differently. You do. Uh, Robert Brock would suggest that he, um, <coughs> they, they now do a deep fried cuddly whirly. Oh, oh that would be interesting. That would be interesting. <laughs> Gary Glass says, there's no difference in temperature, Michelle. Both places are freezing in the summer and even more freezing in the winter. You're absolutely right, Gary. <laughs> if we get an average of 16 degrees through July... It's, that's a, that's a summer here. It's roasting. Uh, people are running about with their uh, just in their vest. That's sharpened. So Ben Jones thinks he thinks the solution uh, should be as a grinder with two wheels on either side, like the Vic Mark one. Then you can have 60, 180, uh, 300, 600. And then maybe a Tourmec for 1200 grit. <laughs> uh, it's just a bit overkill there, Ben. Yeah, I think so. I think I'll stick with my Pro Edge. It's a whole lot simpler to use. Yeah, in any case, there's deep fried cream eggs. They rot, they rot your teeth before you bite into them. <laughs> oh, dear. I never understand the, the, the deep fried Mars bar thing. I never... No, me either, Steve. Never. Yep. So Terry's just chipped in there, he says. 600 grit is great for honing your hand chisel and planer blades. It makes them razor sharp. Yep. You could even go further than that if you want. If you're if you're into that uh, hand chisels and stuff, two thousand grit's not unusual. That's what I take my chisels up to. Yep. And John Mooney says it's only twenty degrees in Seville today. <laughs> Thanks, Se John. Seville. It doesn't really. He says if that helps, he says yeah, it doesn't really help, John. Thanks all the same. But you enjoy the heat, my friend. Is this about rallies? So hold on, what's this about rallies? Oh, Kev has been doing rallies, has he? Mm -hmm. Driving a nub again, Kev. Terry says he takes some of his chisels up to 2,000 grit as well. Yeah, yeah, planar blades would be good up to 2,000 grit. If you watch the... the have you ever seen the guys in, in Japan who... Um, take like... Like... Uh, it's like uh, almost as thin as paper or even thinner than paper. And they, they have competitions for it. What, what, they, they kind of have wooden planers with blades on it. Yeah, I've seen that. It's amazing. It's like an old-fashioned block planer, isn't it? Yeah. But it's, it's quite wide as well. It's about four or six, six inches wide or something. But Amy says it's currently 14 degrees Celsius here. It's 36 minutes past midnight in the Victoria. Well, gee, 14 degrees there summer, Amy. We see that someone mentioned a Scottish marshal. Yes, I did. 
così. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, a, maybe a deep fried Scottish Mars bar in a Yorkshire pudding might be an interesting thing. How about that? Oh, motorbike rally. So, oh, coast to coast. Well, Kevin NK says he, it was motorbike rally. He does coast to coast. Uh, and he had a rally stall. Very good. Rob Copperer Wood Tunney, is eh? Who? Rob Copperer Wood Tunney. Oh, Rob, how you doing? Right, so I'm all the way through now. Malcolm Douglas is back from his lunch. Welcome oh, back. Welcome back, Malcolm. We've currently got 72 people watching. Wow. And you've been, been going for 35 minutes. Well, thank you very much, everybody, for coming over. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to turn this a little tiny bit, just so I can get in there to finish off with the Simon Hope hollower. I wonder what happened if you if you made your Yorkshire pudding and put a Mars bar in it, just to put a bit of a lump of Mars bar in it and just let it stick in the oven. I wonder how that would work. Be very fatty, wouldn't it? I would think so. Yeah. Be gross, I would think. Somebody's bound to like it. It's warmer in Switzerland than it is in my in my house today. And she says all the lovely snow that they had has melted. Oh well. You're absolutely right, Kev. You don't have to freeze the Mars bar to deep fry them. You just dip them in um, butter and throw it in the thing. Paul from Wood Tunning at Home has just joined us. Hi, Paul. Good afternoon, Paul. Good to see you, buddy. So what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to follow the shape of the neck. So it makes it look a little bit more interesting if you put because no doubt someone's gonna put their finger down there. Eh? Yeah, absolutely. Particularly a wood tunner. Oh, Lucy Bundy Row has just suggested we should have Yorkshire pudding with golden syrup and ice cream. That mightn't be too bad, actually. My nan used to have Yorkshire puddings and jam. Yeah, and can't see anything wrong with that. No. Uh, Len's handcrafted wood saint is in. Good morning, all he says. Hi, Len. Welcome to Q&C, it's 7 degrees and cloudy at 5.40 in the morning in Victoria, BC, British Columbia, Canada. Mark Jump with wood tunnels in. Hi, Mark. All right, so just see if we've got a continuous thickness. Oh, that's pretty thin. A little bit of thick there, so we can just take a little bit out of that, a little bit out of the middle there, but other than that, we're about about right, I think. Lewis the Klondike Craftsman has joined us. Hi, Lewis. Hi, right, Lewis. How you doing, mate? Give you a day off, are they? I think he was doing doors, was he not? Yeah, I think so. That and decorating. Yeah. Just check. I don't want to go too thin with that. Did I say that Grandpa Jim was in? I think I did. Yeah, you did. You did too. So we just... This is actually coming out in a really nice shape, Steve. Thanks, Brian. <coughs> well, I don't want to go much thinner than that because because that's different in orientation with the other. That might move a little bit different and crack. So I don't want to go ah, too. Ah, thank you, dear. Michelle's just brought me a nice cup of tea and, and a cookie. And a cookie. 
You spoil it. You spoil it, Michelle. I'm ruined today. Tell you something to go, Luke. Shopping time. Yep. Time for Tesco's. See you later, Terry. Other supermarkets are available. Yeah, Amy has just said, take care, Terry. It's not really Terry who needs to take care of Ruth. She's <laughs> taking Terry out in the in public. Really, she'd be left at home. And Terry has reminded us, he says, okay, bye, everyone, but don't forget, I'm on at 1.30 tomorrow and not 1 p.m. And he's sticking here and he has put his link in again. Thank you for that, Terry. Question, question, question from Todd at Glen Cove. Chocolate survey. Oh, do you prefer dark chocolate versus milk chocolate or vice versa? Well, I prefer uh, milk chocolate. I don't like white chocolate, which is not really chocolate at all. Who ever thought white chocolate was should be called chocolate in the first place? It was, uh, <laughs> nutless. Uh, but I don't like dark chocolate. It's too bitter for my taste. I like milk chocolate. Dairy milk is my favourite bar of chocolate. Yeah, I'm a, I like bar chocolate, I do personally. Bourneville, oh man. Bar of Bourneville. No, I, I, I think I've had one bar of Bourneville in my life and I ate a bite of that thing. Yeah, Bourneville is good. So I'm just going to try and get in there, but I don't want to put my finger in there, so I'm going to get my my stick. Mm -hmm. It's never a good idea to stick your finger in a hole that's rotating. And because you've sanded the inside of the bowls already, it's just the neck. It's a good way to get a good finish on the inside of a hollow form, isn't it? Yeah, I know it's cheating really, but... Well, just it's not really. How did you do it before he did deep hollowing? How did you do it when he just used to have scrapers? Oh, I suppose so. Before, before gouges were invented. Yeah, I suppose. That's exactly how he did it, the way you're doing it now. So it's not cheating at all. It's just a different method. John Mooney says Caramac. Oh, Caramac. Oh, I remember that. Oh, God. <laughs> That's some years ago, I remember that. Ooh. And Lucy says she adores Lindor. Yeah, well, just expensive taste you got, Lucy. Yeah, just you know, go say that. And uh, on, 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 on the topic of chocolate, who ever decided that chocolate and orange flavour go together as uh, oh. taste buds or something wrong with them? No, nothing better than a chocolate yeah. orange. Blech. Yeah, but you can say about anything, can you? Strawberry, mint. <laughs> William, Kenny's, <laughs> William Kenny says, if it has the word chocolate on the wrapper, I'm eating it. <laughs> <laughs> Rex B says, question, question. What is Caramac, please? Oh. Yeah, this, it was like a coffee flavour, wasn't it? Well, I can't remember what, what the flavour oh, was like. Not a caramel flavour, sorry, not a coffee. Caramel yeah. flavour. But the actual stuff inside it was like a a creamy, yellowy colour. A strange colour. Let me have a look so you can find it. It was, a, it was a chocolate when I was a they kid. Still, oh, they actually oh, still make it, too. Oh, do they? Believe them. They do, yeah. Wow. You can buy 24. Oh, they're made by Nestle. Oh, there you go. There's the problem. It's made by Nestle. That's why it's rotten. Um, you can buy 24 bars from um, uh, from on eBay for 24, £22.49. Or a little bar for 75 pence each. There you go. How about that? Caramac. I can't believe it. it has a Wikipedia page, would you believe? <laughs> uh, copy that. So anybody who's interested in what Caramac is and 
there's there's the link to the the Wikipedia page. What does it say about it on Wikipedia? Uh, the brand name for caramel-based confectionery uh, was created by Macintoshes and is now manufactured by Nestle, first introduced in the United Kingdom in 1959. Oh, wow. The name is derived from the uh, abbreviate this uh, abbreviation of caramel and Macintosh. So, caramel Mac. There you go. Interesting. I'd almost forgotten about that. And Andy Ruther Lerner suggests that uh, the best thing to go with chocolate is more chocolate. <laughs> yeah, ben James says the best that, that you can't beat a Snickers in mean, a marathon. It's the perfect combination. Peanuts. I do like Snickers. You can. Yeah, I do as well. Or a dead. <laughs> Gary Glass says, orange chocolate is almost as weird as alcohol-free Guinness. I agree. What's uh, Amy saying in the background? So what, what is Amy saying there? in the background? Okay, I'm confused by what you're saying then, Amy. But then that's not difficult. It's easily confused. So Steve tells me anyway. <laughs> Todd Glenn Copley says Reese's peanut butter cups. Yeah, well, what? They're nice. What's that? Dara Coons is Snickers with almonds. What? Almonds in a Snicker bar? It's peanuts, is it not? Yeah, I thought it was peanuts. Uh, Wesley Hanna says, uh, dark chocolate and coconut. Bounty. That's dark chocolate, isn't it? They do bounty, dark chocolate and coconut. What was the, what was the things I used to like? Hazelnut whirls. I used to like them. Oh, are they the things with the, like a little cone? Yeah, a little, little spiral thing. Yeah. Um, with uh, sort of nougat filling in or fondant filling in the middle, sort of kind of white kind of stuff in the middle, and uh, they had a, a nut set on the top. That's it, a walnut. Lovely. But Amy says a bounty is awesome. Thanks. Well, it's I disagree. What? It's got coconut in it. It's I mean coconut. Who wants to eat no cake cut? I mean. Yeah. Oh, so D Dara says that uh, Snickers do them now with almonds in it. Okay. Uh, I see. Well, I haven't seen them advertised here, uh, Dara. almost wonder, is that just an American thing? I don't know. I'm going to have to look now. <sighs> see the things you people have me looking up. It's a wood dummy channel. Insane. Welcome to Sunday lunchtime chocolate shop. Chocolate shop. Oh, you do get them, yeah. They're on eBay. Yep, yeah, yeah, they do indeed. I stand corrected. And you can buy them on Amazon. Oh my god. You get fun size ones as well. They are. Amazing. Roy the boy says uh, in, in relation to the chocolate theme I've just had a penguin Penguin P -p 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 Pick up a penguin Pick up a penguin Wesley Hanna has just uh, this, is, this is the strangest thing I've, I've heard today And the dark chocolate Milky Way Oh I've never heard of that Yeah Donna, the love angel artist, has joined us. Hi, oh, Donna, how are you? Hello, Donna. 
Ben, uh, Rex B is having to go. He says, uh, be safe and stay warm. Try See you later, Rex. Rex. See you later, Rex. On both accounts. Andy says, uh, Brian, Lucy is now on a hunt for chocolate. <laughs> a trip to the shops in the huffing, I feel. Does anybody eat, like chocolate ice cream? Todd says, I used to stop at the store on the way from college every day to get a 16-ounce 16 in- 16 Coke. Oh, mate, that's huge. And a packet of snowballs. You might, just, you, you uh, might as well yeah. just have a bag of sugar. Yeah, you might as well, yeah. <laughs> snowballs. Everybody remember getting snowballs in a wee packet? Oh, well, they, uh, they're like fluffy inside with yeah, yeah. coconut right. chucked over the top of them. Marshmallow. That's it, marshmallow. That's the word I was looking yeah, for. The chocolate, uh, and, a, and a chocolate shell with uh, um, coconut sprinkled over the top. Joe Senior likes uh, Whisper Gold. Mm. Gold. Expensive taste, you see, Joe's got. That's, that's Carberry's chocolate, though. Carberry's it's Whisper. It's just milk chocolate with bubbles in it, basically. Snowballs would be good if I hadn't to put the, the coconut on the outside, I have to say. Oh, do you want it on the inside, did you? No, I just don't like coconut. All right. Susie says, yes, chocolate ice cream is good, but hazelnut ice cream is her favourite. Mm, I like I like um, cookie dough ice cream. Ben and Jerry's cookie dough ice cream. Oh, man. I'm very, I've got very simple taste in ice cream. I like vanilla. Tonic tea cakes. Mm, I agree with that, Donna. Tonic tea cakes. Yeah, but they're very Moorish, aren't they? A pack of yeah, twenty. What, what are they? Yep. Twelve in a box. They're like they're like Somewhere. snack size, aren't they? Yep, or bite size, just oh. one at a time. Well, it seemed like when I was growing up, it seemed to be a whole lot bigger. But that's maybe because I was smaller. I don't know. I'm not sure. But they probably are smaller than they used to be. Everything's smaller, especially Mars bars now. The king size Mars bar now is the same. Is smaller than what an original Mars bar used to be. <coughs> Lucy Bundy Rowe has just suggested that minstrels are the way to go, but you need to have two in each cheek. <laughs> <laughs> And just let them melt there. Is that what you do, Lucy? Put two in each side and just let them melt. Uh, Lucy is suggesting that van- vanilla ice cream and maple syrup is the best. Vanilla ice cream it doesn't need any additives, uh, Lucy. You and your maple syrup. <laughs> Coffee-flavoured ice cream. Go away, Susie. Coffee-flavoured. <laughs> Although other people uh, seem to think that's a great idea, coffee flavoured ice cream. I'm not a great coffee lover stuff. Yeah, I don't like coffee flavour much. I don't even drink coffee. See, Lucy's found the ice cream, or the, sorry, the chocolate. She's uh-huh. sat eating Lindor now. Uh, the, the, the issue is that she's actually having to share them. Oh, oh no. She should have went and hid in the cupboard, Lucy. Wesley Hannah suggests that coffee ice cream is awesome. Not a chance, Wesley. Not in this house. Yuck. Oh, so, so, so you, you people, some of you people are weird. <laughs> Donna's suggesting now mango and raspberry ice cream from haagen I mm, oh, like sorbet. Uh, so I uh, 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 like mango and all that, you know. Uh, mango sorbets. Yeah, that's like a icy ice cream stuff, yeah. isn't it? So uh, a sorbet is a, um, 
an in-between uh, dishes that's basically was designed for cleaning your palate before you started your next course. Oh, right. So okay. it's for, right? Susie wants vanilla ice cream in a glass with aramula cream poured over it. Well, that sounds not too bad. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> well, Lucy says, when the mama bird has worms, the chicks move in, Lucy. Yeah, <laughs> indeed. If you're sitting with, with chocolate, your children will want some. Or maybe it's not the children, maybe it's Andy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last grip. <laughs> Len's, Len's suggesting that his two favourite drinks are coffee and beer. If there's a coffee ice cream, why is there no beer flavoured ice cream? <laughs> well, there you go. Fair enough. Why not? Some of the things I've heard on here so far are just a bit. Right, so what have you sanded that up to now? This is 400. 400 grit. Yeah. Uh, I thought, are we going to texture about this or what are we going to do? Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do really, yeah. What do you guys think? What does what the chat think? Should we do a bit of texture on this? I've got to be careful because it's not very thick. So Yeah, but your little uh, um, cut sole burrs would be good for that. Yeah. What, the one I used last Friday night? Yeah, a little, little round, round one, which which you can control really well. It doesn't it doesn't dig in too far, you know? It's yeah. got a light deck shedding over just it. Either, just like an inch either side of that line. Yeah, if you wanted to put a band on it, or you could do a band where the neck joins and where the, the other join is, and then colour it, and it would look nice, I think. Gary Glass says, texture, burn, and colour. Colin's suggesting burn lines. Uh, I think I need to put colour on it, I think, to get rid of the... Because obviously we've got three bits of wood there, and you've got them transition lines. So yep. I think I think I need to put colour on it to get rid of those. So, so Roy the Boy is suggesting texture on the joints. Gab says texture the joints. <sighs> Excuse me if I'll have a sneeze. Um, Kevin 9K says texture the joint. Chris Dodds, texture around the middle. What I was thinking was an either side, inch either side of that line, <laughs> doing a black band through there with some texturing and some colouring, and then I was thinking about doing the neck a different colour as well. I'm not sure though on the neck. I might, I don't know. But let's put I a band of texture. Do another band of texture just just where the joint is at the neck. Yeah. Just about half an inch wide or so. Oh, yeah. Okay, so let's get a skew. And then a band at the middle, which is which is wider, maybe two inch wide at the, in the middle. Yeah, an inch either side of the line, I was yeah. thinking. And then I do half an inch either side of the line at the top. So I reckon there. And text, the data says text the joints before colouring. Yeah, that's the plan. And there. Susie said burn the joints and colour the middle bit. Okay. <laughs> Robert Broadwood says, no more food talk. I'm starting to chew, chew the edge of this laptop. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could always get up and walk to the kitchen and get yourself something. Find to be ice cream in your fridge, surely. There's always ice cream in my fridge. And Lucy says, and now I've had too many Lindor. Oh. All right, so let's get the tool out. Poor Lucy, poor Lucy be feeling, um, will be poorly for the rest of the day now. She'll ruin her lunch. She, she won't eat her dinner. Chocolate. She won't eat her lunch now, will she? Ben Jama says you could hide all the joints by painting it all black. It's funny you should say that, Ben. I did think about painting it all black and then just putting some um, Joe Sonia's over the top of it. But. Oh. I think you should do texture first. Texture, yeah. texture, texture. 
So we use the same bit as I used the, for Friday night. The other thing about the other thing about texturing sometimes, guys, is uh, you know how Steve has just put uh, lines on there to keep the texture in between uh, two very straight lines. Um, texture looks good with a wavy edge, as opposed to a straight line. Right, so if you watch me on Thursday, you'll see why. Oh, a little taster there. Right, so Gary Glass got to go. It's time for him to run. He'll catch up later. Thanks to Steve and Brian. Take care, everybody, peeps. You're welcome. Bye, Gary. Stay safe, buddy. Have a good day. <laughs> and Lucy says now she's wiping chocolate covered mouths. Yeah. Yeah, that's what you get for having small people. Good little bars, those. I'll tell you what, that bit of wood is a lot harder than that bit of wood. <laughs> is it not? I thought it was the same piece of wood. Well, both bit of ash, but... That looks like ash, anyway. <laughs> My goodness. Kevin 9K has not been well, he says. Robert, I've not been well here. I've lost a stone this week. And Karen's lost uh, half a stone. Felt felt too ill to even eat toast. Well, I hope you start to feel better soon, Cam. That's that's not good, uh, not good news, buddy. And Jack, I do be losing a stone. I weighed myself today. Huge mistake. I'm usually I'm, I used to be always in around eighty kilos, and I'm. Currently 93 kilos. Well, so, good so, so I'm not very happy with myself. I'm going to have to do something about that. Hey, Javi, this is. Yeah, no. Todd, Todd is suggesting that you could burn it, sand it, paint it black, and then embellish, and then embellishing cream. <laughs> could have. The embellishing cream would have showed up the difference in the grain panels. Though. The bit of embellishing cream afterwards now might be might be interesting. <laughs> Andy suggests that he loses pounds every time he goes shopping. Yeah, I know the feeling, particularly nowadays. What's just here? Is that the same Dremel bit you used on Friday? Yes. Actually, not a Dremel bit. It happens to fit in a Dremel. It's a uh, cut saw, and it's the same one you used on Friday, yeah. Mm. Andrew's suggesting maybe possibly rainbow waxes on the texture. Oh, <laughs> It's getting about last year, Rainbow Bikes is now there. You're absolutely right, Robert. It's all the sitting about I've been doing recently with the bad foot. Sitting about and eating too much. Hmm. 
Mm. Todd's suggesting a river table in quotation marks, centre feature. Mm. I got a couple of nice bits of wood from William yesterday that uh, I've actually got cracks down one side of it. Uh, I intend to fill the cracks with resin and then turn a hollow form out of it. At some stage. But when the weather warms up somewhat. Bad cough now. I'm blaming my son. He brought it into the house, so it's his fault. <laughs> well, Matthew. Joe Senior said she 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 would like a river table. I actually have a nice piece of wood in there. It could make a nice little small coffee table sized river table. You could always commission me to make you one, John. There you go. There's an offer you can't refuse. And Roy the boy says, I saw Steve's piece he did on Friday and it looks better seeing it in person. And uh, you can see the good marks it makes. Uh, and he did really well. He did. It was a nice piece. We always say, don't we? Cameras never do him justice. <laughs> well, we're driven by Colin. I've just said, Brian, resin? Who are you? What have you done with the real Brian? No, I have some resin. I have a pressure pot and I intend to do it. Few little bits just to just to try it, just to see. You got your extractor on, Steve, yeah? Yeah. I have. Yeah, it won't be it won't be full resin pieces, Robert Rudd. Um, I, I don't intend to make full resin pieces. I, I'm tending to use the resin to uh, fill in voids and stuff like that. I have no notion of casting a big resin blank and turning it into something. I'm going to use it as, a, as an enhancement to wood, if I can. Watch your space. That's the, that's the plan, anyway. And we'll see what happens. It may be a disaster, or it may turn out to be nice. I don't know. We shall see. I've already done a resin egg, Susie. Because that Steve person sent me a big lump of resin that I had to turn where is said resin egg <sighs> little re resin egg on a pedestal I think I did it as a live Susie if you want to go back and have a look at it I could be bothered I just need to look the link up couldn't I let me see <coughs> Excuse me. Oh. Bum, 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 bum. Well, Roy, the boy is asking a question, Steve. He says, will you try using that cutter on resin? Uh, I don't know about a ruin it. I might clog it all up. No, I think it might be all right, as long as you don't bury it. Into it. Oh, Ruby Claire's joined us. Hi, Ruby. Hi, Ruby. <laughs> My subscribers have slowed down some. Shocking. Let's see.
Donna says she wants a small resin side table with purple buttons. Hmm. Okay. <coughs> well, Lucy says we'll see you all soon. Off to get some sunshine. See you later. Good. Uh, yeah, find that resin thing. I'll look it up later. Stephen says, and he's still going. I've made lunch, ran a couple of marathons, sandy the side of a ship, got back in, and I love Steve's dedication to the project. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's cheeky, brute, Stephen. Uh, Doug Miller says, sorry, I have to go. This piece gets more interesting all the time. I'll be watching the rest later. Bye, all. Bye, right, Doug. Right. Thanks, Thanks for coming much. in, mate. Oh, I missed a question from Kev. Oh, let's go back up. Mm. I'm still looking, Kev. Kevin, I get. Needs more on the actual joint as making it stand out doing other trade. It's actually doing it over the joint. So it shouldn't be, the joint should actually be disappearing now. Is that the question you were talking about, Ken? Ruby Clear says it's looking good, Steve. Thank you. Uh, let's go back there again. Let's see who's talking now. Yeah, Andy has just said, oh, we're, we're taking the kids for cake. Yeah, right enough, yeah. <laughs> I think that sounds like a Lucy's idea. We'll go for it, let's go and have some cake. Uh, Kevin NK says, question, question, does the cuts all need changing? Looks like it's getting hot. I don't think they get very hot, do they? Uh, it's just that where you've got the hard grain and the soft grain, that's burned a little bit. The, um... They're carbide, so they shouldn't, yeah, they shouldn't get Hot and distorted around. It's just where the grains are, that's where I was. <laughs> what speed does your Dremel work at? This is about four, about 27,000 27, RPM. Hmm. What am I running this at? So Andy, something to go. He says he's going, to, he's going out to work on the shed. Well, it's still light outside. Catch you later. Looks great, Steve. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Andy. Enjoy your time in the shed this afternoon. Uh, okay. Thank you, Kev. If you're a question, if you're a prefix by a couple of question marks, I might have seen it easier. <sighs> All right. So what I'm going to do is, because I've just gone over the lines a couple of little bits, I'm just going to get the skew. I'm just going to widen. Actually, I'll get a detailing tool. And I'll just widen those lines a little tiny bit. Uh -huh. Hopefully, that should... Uh...
Oh, We've done it, my Barry. I've just said, well, that's one way of covering a joint. Stop giving me ideas, Steve. <laughs> 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 right, so now we need to sand and seal it. Before we go any further, so I'm going to spray it with a bit of sand and sealer. So first things I'm going to do is I'm going to put some tape on my lathe, on my chuck. Tape up the chuck. It's easy to tape it, it's to clean it, so. It, it, it is. So get a cover for the lathe. So I don't want to spend no more time cleaning it. I know. I appear to have lost the cover that I had for my lathe. I don't know what I've done with it. It seems to have disappeared. I think that Michelle one must have stolen it. <laughs> so we don't need to worry about the inside because the inside's already treated. So we just yes. need to do inside the neck. Mm hmm. Todd is asking, Lewis, is there any videos coming soon? Lewis hasn't done a video for ages, he's been too busy building a house. <laughs> Roy the boy says, don't worry, yeah, Brian can't multitask. You're absolutely right, Roy, I can't. <laughs> I don't need to multitask. I just concentrate one thing at a time. Why would I need to multitask? That's a woman's job, apparently. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Donna says, I love the shape and the way you've textured it. Thank you, Donna. I'm just quickly drawing this off with the hot air gun. Robert Broadwood says, with that spanner, Brian, I know, uh, I know, Robert. There are lots of things I could do with that spanner. <laughs> I'm restraining myself currently. Humorous, Kev. Humorous. All right, let's give it another quick coat. Not worrying about this bit too much because that's already had a couple of coats, so it's the fresh mm -hmm. bits really. The texturing and the yeah. Ben Jarman says, Steve, that's looking absolutely fantastic. Thank you, Ben. All right, so we'll just dry that off quickly. Gav says, that's definitely changed the look. It has indeed. And Ben Jarman says, you should auction this piece. Hmm. You never know. We have the charity auction later in the year, so. We're telling my body says it looks beautiful, Steve. Thank you very much. What's the compliment? It's not even finished yet. I know what I'm thinking is doing this this black and putting some of those camellia colours over it. Ooh. The little cut sole bars are about fourteen quid each, roughly. So they're well worth well worth the buying, I think. Thing is, you pay for them; they don't have to. I mean, if you buy good, they last, don't they? Correct. You buy cheap ones, you keep replacing them. You might as well buy the good ones in the end. Mm -hmm. 
I bought three or four sets of cheap Chinese ones, and they just they don't last. They don't stay sharp. I like some wooden things as well impressed. Well impressed. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm getting worried because it's either one or two things. It's either like I've actually upstepped up the game, or normally I turn rubbish. <laughs> yeah, well, so, so I'm starting to worry now. Um, no, co no comment. <laughs> <laughs> right. So what I need now is I need some gesso. Barry has been Barry has been a bit uh, derogatory here. He says, uh, "What's them things that Brian can't use?" That's the rainbow waxes, Barry. <laughs> That didn't leak. And Andrew from Wavy Witch has just said twelve ninety two on Amazon. Brian, mine's just arrived. That's it. That's right. Twelve ninety two. I think that's what I paid. But twelve quid on. Thought fourteen quid was on. I get some gloves on. I could all part figure off the top of my head. Uh, Andrew from AJK Woodworks has question. I have just bought a Proxon long neck angle grinder where. Which texturing disc would you recommend, please? Arbitech. Yeah. Well, they do a, a rasp one. They do. You can get a rasp. You can get a, like a, a rasping disc, if you like. Um, there, there's actually loads of them, but if you just want it for doing, like, uh, cutting texture lines, the Arbitech disc with the two little carbide tips on it is ideal. Right, I'm going to cheat. I'm going to put some line and tape around there because I know what's going to happen if not. Yeah, he's going to go over the edge. Uh, wait a minute, I have to give Mike Walter a shout just to make sure you're, you're allowed. <laughs> John Mooney says, maybe part of it in the middle, maybe... <laughs> John Mooney says, maybe part it off in the middle, Steve, and then add a segmented bit. Yeah, no, John. No, John. Any more comments like that, John? You'll be out. You'll be, you, you'll be getting timed out there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's suggesting how you could actually make this last for another week. <laughs> yeah, week 16. It's now nine foot long. <laughs> Roy the boy says I have those bits on my wish list just saying <laughs> <sighs> yep the wood dude has just said Brian I've just used some rainbow wax uh, try using just a little water when applying and wiping as you go for a great finish well you, that, I'll just pass that hint straight on to Steve because I sent him the wax and I haven't <laughs> got any anymore I gave them away but thanks for the tip Stephen appreciate it I are, when you're used to using the uh, Hampshire Sheen ones they are. You have to be a little bit more careful with them than you do the Hampshire Sheen mm. ones, that's for sure. Yeah, you certainly do. They just dry, dry far too quick, I think. But the spirit stains are the same. Mm, I think that's the, true. I think the spirit stains are very similar. They dry too quick as well. Are you having trouble with that, Steve? No, it's just that the light's glaring off the, the other side and I'm having trouble seeing the side I want to see. Uh, Roy the boy wants to know what that tape is, Steve. This is pinstripe tape. It's for yep. automotive. And it's uh, a flexible tape that gives you a nice sharp edge. And it's um, it will give you the, the paint shouldn't, unless you slar the paint on, the paint shouldn't go underneath it like it masking tape, it, like it does masking tape. It's used for putting pinstripes on cars. And it, you can actually bend it into a curve. Can bend it any like, any shape you want, it, really. Hmm. And it comes in different thicknesses too. <laughs> Robert Broadwood says, "Roy, 
if you buy them for me, I'll buy them for you. That's fair enough. And then at least you're not buying them for yourself. That's just uh, a sense that is. Mm. So that's that one and that one, so we'll do this one. Yeah, Alex wants to know what the black stuff is, and it's gesso. Alex. Just painter's gesso. Which is a, a, a product that painters use to prepare canvases. Uh, it's, just, it's like an undercoat, if you like. But it's got, Have you got the tub handy there, Steve? We can show them what it is when you've finished up. Yeah, let me just tape this up and I'll show mm -hmm. Yeah, when you finish that. Dude says rainbow waxes can be mixed and applied like a paint. Oh. Oh. Now you tell me, Stephen. Not much good with paint either, come to think of that. <laughs> but we maybe have to give him another go then. I'll send him back to you, Brian. Oh, you're too kind. Have you not used them all yet? I've used them. But there's still stuff no. in them. Now, Susie has asked her question. Uh, would burning the lines make it even more secure from the paint bleeding outside the texture? I'm not doing it to stop it from bleeding, Susie. I'm doing it so if I go over the line, it doesn't matter. That's what I'm doing it for. Because the gesso, once it's on, it won't be coming off. So it's more for me, old man, unsteady hands. Oh, I know that feeling. <laughs> Oops. Right. It's a paint, so it won't bleed out like a stain will. If it was a stain, obviously it would bleed out, but a paint won't bleed like that. Right, so... so um, bottle, they, bottle lines are really good for when you're using stains. So that's There's what it is. Castle. This comes from the range. So it goes a long, long way. You don't need a great deal. And what you want to be doing is working it right into the, the texturing. Because you want to be covering all your texturing. Don't want to believe white bits showing through. No. Um, if you score, if you, um, Kev has just said, Susie, a scored line should stop the bleeding too. Uh, it doesn't. A scored line won't stop and bleed. A right, burn line will. Um, a burn line does because it seals the, it seals the little, uh, um, pores that they, uh, in the wood. Whereas a cut line doesn't. When you so burn it, when you're burning it, you're closing the end of the porous lines. Yeah, right. Purple burglar alarm, then. Yes, I can't see it. Ben just challenged me to say that. What, purple? purple burglar alarm. Not that difficult. Okay, Ben, I do worry about Ben sometimes. Me too. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever uh, he would ever... do suggest. Go on. Go on. Um, so the wood does, says Brian, they can be buffed uh, to a high sheen of bleak luster uh, and they look beautiful. Check out Christy Dalton's work. Yeah, I've, uh, I have seen some of Christy's work. It's lovely stuff. She's very clever with paints um, and waxes and stuff. She, she blends them and does all sorts of fancy stuff. See a demo, and she did a demo sometime. Why did she do the demo? She did a chestnut demo, didn't she? Uh, did she do? Did she do a thing on um, three hundred and sixty? No, it wasn't three hundred and sixty. No, the thing that Jamie did. What did you call that thing? Oh, crafty, crafty festival. Yeah, the crafty festival. That sort of died a death, didn't it? Uh, Jamie was, took a step back from it for a while. I think just to oh. get. I think he, he did suggest he was getting kind of or, reorganising and doing something later, maybe. 
Who careful Steve. Yeah. Close to the edge there, buddy. <laughs> Now, now we're getting some uh, tongue twisters typed into the chat, Chris Dodds. What's that bit? Did, uh, any of you guys go and have a look at Chris Parker's website and stuff, uh, the special guest here one from Friday. Some of the stuff that that guy has produced, the holoforms and stuff with texturing on the outside, is absolutely amazing. Yeah. He's a very talented man. <laughs> ben Jowell says, apparently Scottish people have trouble saying that. And I've been lied to by the internet yet again. Well, Scottish people do actually have trouble saying that. And it's because of the vowels. And Scottish people are not good with vowels. It causes an issue. We tend to miss out vowels. But because you're Scottish Irish, you can manage it. I can. But I'd have to think about it. Uh, um, I read it a couple of times before I actually read it out. So once this is dry... James Dunn's got to jump off. He says he'll catch the rest later. Great job, Steve. Thank you very much. Bye, James. All right, so we'll let that dry. Get a little bit of heat on that just to dry off a little bit better. Then we'll get some... What's the time? What's the time? Half past two. Oh, blimey. Is everybody all right to hang on or...? Yeah, you work away there. We're doing that. You've been going for 93 minutes. I don't want to bore people. <laughs> Well, none, none of us is bored, I don't think. All right, so we'll, we'll quickly dry this off with a hip air gun. Good one, Andy. If you think I'm reading that out, you've got another thing coming. But I am a fit pheasant plucker. <laughs> Uh, Royal Boy says, question, question, show me the name of the paint again, Steve. It's not paint, it's gesso. 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 You need to show him the label, because he obviously wants to take a screen print of it. Where is it? Where have I put it? Over there. <laughs> Where's the Anna says, uh, I've got to run. There you go, it's Galleria. Not Mamma Mia, Galleria. Galleria, Galleria. Uh, where's the harness? He's got to run. Brian is no Nicky. <laughs> but he did good. Looks great so far, Steve. Bye all for now. See you later, See you later Wesley. Thanks for coming in, buddy. Dr. Bob says, yes, it's still morning here. So he's okay. He hasn't fallen asleep yet. Need well, to I'd, like, I, I'd like to get it finished today, but if people have got to go, then... No, we're all right. There's 61 people watching still, Steve, so just walk away. You're gone. Keep going. Ben Jowen says, I can hang on, but you'll have to pay me extra. Oh, extra. I'll give you double what you get now, Ben. How's that? For the extra time, yeah. You're on double time now, Ben. Double nothing is still nothing. It better sounds better. <laughs> the wood dude says, are there any vowels in Scottish? I can't, hear that. I can't say I've ever heard them before. No, they don't really, uh, yeah. Yeah. And it gets worse in some parts of Scotland. If you go to um, some parts of Edinburgh, for example, there are, they, they just don't use vowels at all. Just missed them out completely. I see there's a job going in the Scottish Parliament if anybody wants one. There is. The poisoned dwarf has resigned. Yay! Is 
So what are you putting on this now? You're putting on the rainbow colours? No, not rainbow colours. Uh, Chameleon colours. Chameleon colours, that's the uh, one. I'm going to um, just dry this off, then I'm going to put some size on it, and then I'm going to put some of the chameleon colours over it. I think that'll set it and, off. And Dr. Bob is reminding you, Steve, that you have to remember the fact that you have a global audience. Oh, a global, global. Well, so is. People from Australia, people from Canada, people from America, people all over the UK, Switzerland. I mean, how much more global do you want? It's quite amazing when you think about it, that you, you just Joe Bloggs in his workshop playing around and all these people come to watch. Uh, Kev, Kev was just putting the Frankies are reforming, but I think she means the Crankies. Kev. Right, so size. This is, the same, this is the same sort of stuff as you do for um, gold, and, gold leaf and all that. Mm -hmm. But you want to put it on sparingly. Sparingly? Very sparingly. So Just very, a little bit. Thomas Rooney's in California. Well, thank you. Is that, is that not America, Thomas? No. We got uh, got them from Florida as well, and I've oh sorry I forgot about the Midshires uh, view for the for the hobbits in the country or in the chat. <laughs> are you are you referring to Andrew and uh, Terry in that statement, you and including yourself? Because say who is not a huge bloke. <laughs> uh, I'm not so sure about that though. In height. Oh, you mean you mean tall? You mean? Yeah. Is that what you meant? Tall. Yeah, I mean height. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Sean. <laughs> you know oh, he's gonna. You sorry. know he's gonna get payback no, on the quiz, don't you? No, I'm not sorry at all. <laughs> quiz next week, folks. Oh, it's not, is it? Yeah, last for last. I think I'll have to resign from the quiz. Don't be stupid, boy. Don't be, <laughs> don't be stupid, pig. <laughs> Andrew Terry and I are all from Hobbington. Hobbington. Middle Earth, Hobbington. Dr. Bob's in the Veterans Hospital in Washington, D.C. today. More treatment for the old Agent Orange, is it, Dr. Bob? And the Stephen says, I'm from the wild woods of Buckinghamshire, hmm. land of free wood. I've had a, a couple of real good um, um, scores on free wood in the last sort of month or so. I have to say, my good friend uh, William supplied me with some, uh, and uh, from the south of uh, the southern uh, tip of the almost the southern tip of the island, and from the northern tip of the island, um, Richard Fielding as well, gave me some nice bits of free wood. Lovely. My wood store is kind of overflowing currently. It's lovely. Susie, the Swiss wood town, has a question. Have you ever considered doing two auction events for charity per year? Mm. No, we didn't. I think that might be too much. Not just not not just through the donation side, but the work involved as well. Yeah. People get fed up with things if you start doing them too often. I think, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, if we can do it once a year and earn the sort of money... To be honest, this year, or last year, sorry, when we did it, I said to Brian and all the other guys that I thought we wouldn't even get half of what we got the year before because of the climate and everything else, what was going on in the world. But it proved me wrong. I'm grateful it proved me wrong. But Yeah, you get you guys out there proved us wrong. We did think we might have had a bit less, but we were surprised. And it's amazing how, you, how, how deep uh, some people's pockets are. Thanks, everybody. And, and it doesn't matter if you only contribute a pound. It doesn't matter. Exactly, it doesn't matter. Uh, uh, Every penny counts. Every penny counts is right. 
So, Grandpa Jim says the, the Daytona 500 is on today. Hmm. Is that motor race, though? Uh, well, it's cars going right now a circle, basically. Oh, right. No, it's not. You can't really call that motor race, and I don't think. I'm already just upset, Grandpa Jim. Now, <laughs> yeah, there's 60 million Americans sitting there yeah. waiting to watch it. Yeah. Well, it's just it's an oval. It's not even a circle. It's an oval, and the, the, it's, it's even got a bank bank track so they don't fall out and skid sideways and stuff. I, mean, I don't know. Well, they still manage it. Well, they have some spectacular crashes right now. I think that's why people watch it, just for the crashes. And Dr. Bob says he gets to go home to Detroit next uh, Saturday, my train. Nice. Very good, Dr. Bob. All right, so that's the size on there. So we're just going to let that dry off a little bit. We'll get the heat gun on that again. What's this? What's this? Kevin 9K Creation says, I soon must get the Honda Quad ready for selling with its blue line trailer. What, uh, which Honda Quad is it? Pardon me? Kev. Which model of Honda Quad? And, and what's the asking price? Right, he says, Kev, you have all week to get to do it. <laughs> and Kev replied, yeah, the way I'm doing it is going to take that long. <laughs> take your time, take your time. Get it right. Now, how long does the size take? Do you have to let the size dry off a bit? Yeah, if you leave it natural, it'll take about five minutes to go tacky. But I've just got a, a warm... Hot air gun blowing over the top of it. Oh, okay. So once it goes translucent, you still see a little bit of white there. Okay. But once it's gone translucent, we should be ready to... Apparently, uh, Stephen Wood thinks Americans have a problem turning right on a racetrack. <laughs> 250cc. Two, is it two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive, Kev? 2K, what an email, no, 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 for a grand. Three fifty four tracks would be better. Certainly would be better for me, I know. All right, so. So I'm going to be using Good. the uh, flakes, Camellia flakes, um, and I think I'm going to use. I think I'm going to use. Have you got the packet of Camellia flakes there? Can we see them? Or? Yeah, there they are. Let's resin Camellia flakes. See what they are. So I've got a demo board somewhere that I done. Where's that gone? It's a four track. Okay. No, oh, I don't know where the demo board. Is. Um, so I did a, for when I do demonstrations, I done a board with so you could see them. But that's got like purple and gold in it. That's green and blue. That's like purple and blue. Can't see them. Can't see them, Steve. You can't see them. No, you're not in the picture. There you go. So that's yeah. like that's like purple and blue. That's like purple and yellow. That's like Ooh. blue and green. Purple and yellow. That's like a, another purpley, greeny colour. And then you got that one, which is like a blue and red purple sort of thing. So I'm going to use this one, which is like red, purple and yellow. And it's got yeah. a, hint of, a hint of green in it as well. That would be nice. So... But like I say, these are not the ones that Emma do now. These are the ones that Emma used to sell prior to the ones she do now. So, so you want a nice soft brush. And all you need to do is just put the tip of the brush in the flakes. You don't need a massive amount. Just the tip of the so brush. You, and then so just, you, 
Sorry, mate. Susie well, agrees that you should uh, use the one with the yellow in it, a little bit of yellow in it. Yeah, as you can see, there's that, got that, y that, yellow that, and pinky colour, that one. That'll go with the, uh, the wood as well. So what you're doing is just circles to push them into the, into the texture. And like I say, you just need little tiny dibs on your, on your brush. And they go quite a long way, to be honest. I'll put me extraction on because they're floating everywhere. They do. So is that like a badger hair brush? Yeah, it's just a brush that I bought from. It's a round mop brush. Oh, it's like a makeup brush. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. This message was held for review. What message was held for review? That message was held for review. Donna put loads of little purple hearts, and it was held for review for some reason. <laughs> okay. Good old YouTube, eh? Uh, uh, Doctor Bob says, uh, "Guess, guess what? Donna says, guess what my favourite colour is? Yeah, purple." <laughs> Doctor Bob says, "That's because the race cars are designed to turn left, and that goes back to Henry Ford's day when he built his own race car and started auto auto racing to sell his cars." Okay, Doctor Bob, there you are. So that is. <laughs> Bennett says, "Donna." Green? Question mark? <laughs> yeah, no. Cat's quad is called a four track, but it's two wheel drive, yeah. Two fifties are usually two wheel drive. Uh, it's not road registered as uh, it's registered as a farm vehicle, so no tax or MOT. Yeah. Indeed. That's what I need is a farm one as well. If you can just drive it over, Kevin, let Brian have a look at it. Yeah. No, Ben says, no, wait, is it orange? <laughs> Kevin NK says, woohoo, Carol bought me a ProGrind. What's a ProGrind? Don't know. ProGrind? Never heard of it. I'll look at it. I'll have to look at that up. Pro-grind grinding wheels. Pro-grind bondage wheels. Oh, don't know what pro-grind is. Uh, Steve wants to know, are these the same flakes as Brian uses for his eyeshadow? Well, I'm just <laughs> asking for a friend. Oh, 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 only on Friday nights, Stephen. Only on Friday nights, man. <laughs> Donna's just put <coughs> an inverted comma hits Ben with a rubber chicken. <laughs> the frying pan would have been handier, I think. Rubber chicken wouldn't do enough damage to Ben. You see that colour changing? You can't really see that colour changing, can you? Yeah, we can, yeah. yeah as, it, as, it, as it goes off the edge of the picture, we can see it kind of turns a, a sort of goldy greeny colour. Yeah. It's quite hard to show that on camera. <laughs> Stephen Wood dude says, I'll see you on Friday night then. <laughs> certainly will, boy, certainly will. Oh, it's a Gauss Sharpening system. It says Kev. Pro grind. Try to look it up and pro grind it actually comes up as grinding wheels. Mm. 
All right, so we're just going to rub over that, make sure it's all blended in. Get all the loose stuff off of it. Put the lid back on. Put that back in the tub. So I've just typed in on my Google search, Pro Grind, and it comes up with experts on polished concrete. <laughs> okay. Pro, ProGrind.ie, that is. So, hmm, I don't know who that is. That's ProGrind. It's not coming up on my Google. ProGrind Sharpness System on YouTube. Yeah, aren't they? Let's have a look at that. Looking good, Steve, I have to say. All right, let's just get rid of that board. Blow all the extra flakes off of it. So now we've just got to put some wax on it, really. So I'm just going to get a bit of tissue and wipe. Cool. Around here. Now you can lacquer over these. I have actually lacquered over the top of them and they they don't change their shifting patterns, so which is quite nice. Uh, but I'm just gonna put some wax on the natural pieces. So we're mm -hmm. gonna get some Hampshire Sheen eye gloss oh, wax. Yeah. <coughs> so we don't want to get it over our coloured pieces really I did not so that thing you're talking about uh Kev, I've just put a link in for that ProGrain sharpening system. Just check that for me, uh, Kev, let me know if that's it. Kevin Nine k says, who would have thought two bowls joined together could look as good as that? Well, Steve did, obviously. <laughs> oh, no, I didn't think it. Never know unless you try it here. Well, we were talking about mm -hmm. this one night, and I thought, mm, yeah. that's a good idea. I might have a bash. We'll try that. Ben uh, Chalmers says, Emma will love this piece. She will indeed. Right, so let's buff it and off. It does, and Colin says, that does look awesome. And this must be one of your longest Sunday afternoon lives. See, if you're coming up on two hours now. Am I? I'm sorry. Yeah, all right. It's fine. We've lost a few. We've lost a few people going. We're having to go and get the Sunday lunch and stuff, but we've still got fifty-nine people watching. Oh, thank you. <laughs> ben Jarman says the only way you could improve it for Emma would be to add some random gonk hair to the rim. <laughs> <laughs> Give it a little gonk hair skirt underneath it. Just underneath the rim, underneath the colour. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the trouble with these new things when they come out, everybody does them. Yeah. That's why I tried. I've tried not to do them online because mm. obviously I, I do them as a demo, not this particular yeah, project, a, but a, a club demo. You mean? Yeah. But I yeah. use the I use the colours at a club demo. <laughs> is this a Steve or a Terriathon? <laughs> yeah, it's not going to be a Terriathon. We're not going for three hours, that's for sure. No. It's the last coat of wax on it, and then I'll be finished. Looks lovely, Steve. It really does. Nice. A bit of hair in it there, isn't it? From the... Oh, where did that come from? Off that broom brush, isn't it? Oh, 
Barry uh, says, Barry's Wood Creation says, stunning piece, Steve. Great idea. Uh, brilliant uh, executed. Thank you very much, e sir. Executed. And Len's, Len of Len's Handcrafted Wood Sign says, Steve, that looks amazing. Thank you, Len. Thank you very much, everybody. For your and kind Ruby Claire says, Ruby Claire says, for your, for your information... Emma doesn't ship to North America. Oh. That's a shame. If you want some of those colours, Ruby, let me know and I'll get them organised for you. I'll send them to you. These, yeah, ones, these ones actually come from a company called Let's Resin. Mm. You get Let's Resin in America, Ruby? Or Canada, sorry. Not America. Christina and Michael like it. They say it looks brilliant, Steve. Thank you very much. Oh, shouldn't have done that. I oh, know. Guess what Roy the boy just said. Oh, oh did you just get just white paper towel all over caught, you? I just caught it with the tissue. Oh, tragedy. Uh, Roy the boy has just said... I think I'll have to try one of these. Yeah. Uh, of course you will, Roy. If not, why not? Uh, Chris Dodd says, nice, Steve, and no chopping in the background. <laughs> Just for you, Chris. There you go, Chris. Just for you. I'll just have to touch it up a little Dewey says he loves the texture it really makes that resin stuff pop the resin flakes or the chameleon flakes makes them pop it gives them a more of a reflective surface yeah. Susie's quest, Susie has a question Steve what do you prefer Ho hollowing like you normally do or hollowing with this two part glued together system um, I don't know. I don't really. I've not done an, enough of either to worry to really think about it. To be honest, I mean, I don't, I've never done quite a lot of hollow forms. I want to get more into them, but they just take such a long time, don't they? Uh, Ruby's asking you, how do you spell the place that you brought the colours from? It's res. What is it called? Steve Resin. Let's resin. L e t s. L-E-T-S, resin, R-E-S-I-N. Let's resin. Yeah, well, I'm I'll, have to, on I'll have to touch that bit up because I've caught that with the tissue. And because it's not quite dry, really actually been left to dry, really, before. Let's resin.com. So that would let me know. It is. For, that's, an, that's an American company. Well, I'm just get getting it. the link. For, I'm getting the, the link now, Ruby. So that will do for the live. I'll just touch yes. it up because there's a few little bits there, there where the tissues caught yeah. it and that doesn't look very nice. But that will do for today. And I will refinish it. Alex of Wooden Things says, Stunning Steve, I'll be getting me some of those flakes. I think a lot of us will be trying this, says Robert Brockwood. And Wood Turner Barry says, I'm back. I've had dinner. <laughs> <laughs> William Kenny says, uh, stunning, looks amazing, well done, mate. So uh, you should be able to see the colour change a bit more on that camera. And Roy the Boy says, hashtag a two-part hollow form next. Nope. Right. And there's there's the link, Ruby, for that, letsresin.com. The prices in that are in dollars, so it must be an American company. So there you go. Yeah, it's very nice, Steve. Just shame the different colours, but I don't suppose we can do a lot about yeah, that. Yeah, but that's okay. It adds, adds to the interest of the thing. Hmm. You know, it's... it's just wish I'd have done that. Visual appeal. Just wish I'd have done that in the opposite orientation. Aye, ah, bowl, bowl orientation as yeah. opposed to spindle. Yeah. yeah. But there you go. Hollow form's really light. Actually, really, really light. Yeah. That is... Super piece. But what I will do is I will just re 
do this because we're caught with the tissue. You can just see us taking some of the. Yeah, pull pull some off. Yeah, I'll just redo that. That won't be a problem. No. The other good thing about doing it that way is if you're if you're not very good at getting a, a consistent wall thickness all the way down, you want to pierce it. Yeah. You could do the same system: two halves joining together and then pierce it. That yeah. would. And uh, that would look nice too. So, and you would get your constant wall thickness. There you go. Something different. Something other than just. Actually, it's not just a bowl. It's two bowls. <laughs> yeah, two bowls and a stand. You stand it upside down. <laughs> Ta -da. Hot air balloon. That's <laughs> all it is, eh? <laughs> just need a basket for it. Right. Spring. The geese are back. The geezer, the geezer, the geezer. I'm back. All right. So as you saw, two bowls from last week with a spit on the top, glued on the top, and then we broke through. As you can see, I've broken through. Um. So yeah, and then obviously we gessoed it, textured it, gessoed it, sized it, and then these uh, camellia flakes. I'll show you the box quickly so you guys can see what it looks like. They do two lots. They do flakes and powders. Actually, I'm not too keen on the powders. Because the powders, not as, not as the good. powders, yeah, the powders don't give you that sparkly effect. They sort of give you more of yeah. a matte look. And maybe if you lack it over the top, they'd be okay. But they're the powders, and they're the flakes. Uh, so five, Chris, Chris, yeah, Go five ahead. half grams. There's only half grams in each. Uh, oh no, they're they're uh, four fifths of a gram in those ones. But like I say, yeah. you only need just the tip of the Dang brush. Mate. You don't the powders. You use a lot less in the powders um, than what you do with the flakes. But good stuff. There's, but, a, there's a couple of boys being a bit cheeky. Yeah, I there. see it. I uh, see William, it. William, William Kenny's one. He says, "Steve, put that down before you drop." <laughs> <laughs> and Chris Dodd says, two balls on the funnel." <laughs> <laughs> so these are these are. Emma's new ones, the flakes yep. and the powders. Oh, yeah. um, haven't yep. had a chance to try these yet, but I'm going to be using them. Um, I'm, I'm now about to do a demo board ready for demoing with them. So, uh, yeah, go over and check them out. Don't forget, go over to Emma's website and have a, and yep. check her stuff out. I know she they was on back order, but I do believe they're back in stock now. She's, she's got them back yeah, in, so. yeah. But, yeah, so there it is. I know it's been two weeks. But hopefully it's been worth it. Yeah, so, excellent. And it is really, it is, I can't believe how light it is. It's really, really light. I'm sure, yeah. Right, so again, as we had said, um, what's he saying? Have a powder and looks better lacquered. Mm. I, I have the powders and it looks better. Yeah, I don't know where the, I don't know. Oh, here's the right. ones. I here's, I've got one here what's been done with powder. So... These ones, one has been done with powder, and one has been done with flakes. And as you can see, the flake one, which is that one, is a lot more sparkly yeah. than oh, the powder yeah. one. This is the powder one. It's more of a, a matte look. But they still look good. still look good, but... Um, Steve used the flakes to do really. Yeah, the flakes. Yes, that was the Camellia Flakes. I do like the flakes because, like I say, they've got that sparkle about them. Mm, more of an edge. Yeah, and when you texture, way. that gives you that. When you when it's standing like that, you've got parts coming in that way that are pink, and then parts coming they, that way they, are yellow. They, they can't see that because oh, you've covered it. My picture's covered it. That's when it. you like when they're sitting here in the light, you've got bits that come down which are one color, and bits that are coming in another color, and that's the art of texturing it. I suppose if it was textured even more yep. and deeper, then you get more of a Define look out of it, but yeah, you would. Bye, William. It's great live. He says, Catch you guys on the Thank next you, one. William. Thank you, everybody, Thanks, for William. staying over. Right, we're going to go now because I've bored you long enough. Um, massive <laughs> thank you to each and every one of you for coming over and joining us and staying with us. I really do appreciate it. Thank you to Brian for stepping in for Nick. Appreciate that, Brian. What What have you not to forget? Hashtag. Correct. Right, so we're going to play the hashtag uh, week video on the way out. Also, um, it will be live on YouTube tonight at six o'clock for the whole world to see it. So a massive thank you again to everybody who took part in the hashtag week. And the next hashtag, I believe, is on the third, third or fourth of next month. Correct. So um, Correct. come over and see what that's all about. Other than that, guys, um, Terry's on tomorrow at half past one. Don't forget that he's on late. On late. Uh, are you live? No, is there a meeting tomorrow night? 
No, no, there's a meeting tomorrow. Right, either. so Brian won't be tomorrow. Are you putting a video out or not? No, I'm not doing that. No, right, okay. So you'll be back I Thursday. Just, I just won't be there. Yep. So Thursday. Brian will be back Thursday. I will see you Friday with Battle of the Makers. And then Nick will be back on Sunday. So other than that, guys, have a yeah. great week. Speak to you soon. Take care and bye for now. Hashtag week. Oh, bye, no, everybody. hashtag week. Hashtag week and then bye. Like we're twin flames in a different life Deep connection, lights a spark It's like you know me in the depths of my heart We're dreamers Somehow I